Uh, yeah, my trigger fingers itching for your pension. So I'm on the Hello, everyone. <clears throat> my prior video, we I showed you how to make um, pepper steak, and I'm using the lo mein noodles instead of rice. So I'm using pepper steak lo mein. All right. So in this episode, we're gonna do a little chit chat. So what I'm going to do from now on is do a video of a meal, and then you can sit down with me, and we can share the meal and chit chat. How about that? That's the table talk. All right. But before I get started on this. Let me pour some of my wine, and my favorite wine that I like to drink is the Behringer, and it's the white Zinfandel Moscato. It is real sweet, but the Behringer kind of cut the sweetness from the Moscato, so it gives it a nice little flavor. I incidentally got this um, from a Casino. I was at the at the um, steakhouse, and I, I asked for you know sweet white wine and this is what the lady gave me and I was like oh my god this is good it's just right it's not too sweet not too bitter just right all right I'm gonna dig into my lo mein with my peppers Mm. That's so what? Mm hmm You can't go wrong with pepper steak, I'm telling you. Pepper steak is the quickest go-to meal you can make. I like when I go to the Chinese restaurant, I like that pepper steak as well. But sometimes, you know, I just want to make it myself. And the steak that I normally use is like a ribeye because it's nice and tender. But this chopped eye steak that I use, not too bad. It's real flavorful, I can tell you that. And the peppers has a nice little crunch to them. The onions are sweet because they're cooked in a sauce. I toss them first with the meat and the soy sauce and the seasoning, and then they simmer in the sauce So it's sweet. And I tried lo mein because I love lo mein. And so I said, oh, well, maybe I just add my pepper steak to lo mein. And I'm telling you, this is the best thing since sliced bread. This is better than rice. This is better than rice. So I think I'm going to have it like this from now on. And it's filling. Mm. It's very flavorful. So look at my my um on my channel. Look at the pepper steak lo mein. Try it out. I'm telling you, you will love it, and probably will not go back to a Chinese restaurant because it almost tastes. I would say it tastes damn near. Chinese restaurants, pepper steak, and you made it. All right, let's talk about where I got the noodles from. So I got the noodles that at Walmart. You know how they have the ramen noodles and all that soups and stuff. This wasn't there. I stumbled across this. I turned the corner on the other opposite side to my left. And there's this little station that has all Asian type products. So I had the lo mein. And it had the ramen noodles. Ah! I've been looking for some ramen noodles. So what I've been doing is buying, you know, the little cheap packets and using those noodles or buying some expensive packets of soup in a bowl and all of that. But I just want the ramen noodles because I like to add my own ingredients. And so I found this. This is in Walmart. You just have to uh, uh, check your little uh, local Walmart and just look around for it. You even ask one of the, the uh, clerks or, you know, one of the guys that are working on the floors. But look at that picture of a bowl of ramen. We're going to do that one day. 
because I eat ramen all the time. It is my favorite go-to meal, especially during lunchtime because I work from home. During lunchtime, but I want nothing heavy because I don't want to be falling asleep while I'm trying to work. You know, I don't have anybody over me, so it's me. So I got to make sure I stay on point. So um, I'll eat that. And then I add whatever vegetables I have in the refrigerator. It could be broccoli. It could be red onions. Uh, if I have shrimp, chicken, whatever I want to put in that ramen. Boiled eggs, whatever I want to put in that ramen is what I do. And so what I do is when I did the pepper steak, I showed you the beef stock that I buy. They get from Walmart as well. So I use that or I use a chicken brand because they have a roasted chicken stock as well. I use that or the, the chicken as my base for my um, sauce or in my water. So what I would do is I would put out maybe a cup and a half of water and then I would add toasted. Now I know in my video I use regular sesame seed because I didn't have toasted. But I like toasted sesame seed and you can use the regular but I like the flavor of toasted sesame seed. It's just, oh my God, it's just a wonderful, wonderful flavor. It's like twice the flavor of sesame seed because it's like toasted. So it probably brings out the sugars and all the flavors when it's toasted. So I use the toasted sesame seed and I use a little fish sauce. Not a lot because fish sauce is salty. And if you're going to use your um, stock, that's not as salty as fish sauce, but it is a little salty. So you just want to use a little bit because I'm telling you, you ever look at the, the nutrient ingredients, nutritional ingredients for the ramen noodles? That's like 1,200 grams of salt. So you can't feed your kids this stuff every day. They are going to be bound for high blood pressure in the near future. So this is why I don't um, add the season packet. I make my own and I make it less salty. So instead of 1,200 grams, mine by the time I finish would maybe 400 grams. And I can deal with that because I don't want anything higher than 1,200. So that's just a tip. And let me drink some of my wine because my mouth gets thirsty. Uh, this stuff is real good. I got it from the local wine store. It's like eleven dollars. It's not bad. But anyway, what I really want to talk about is whenever you go on a trip. There's some trips that are memorable, and there's some trips like, ah, oh, I'll never do that again. Well, I've never gone on a cruise. I travel all the time, but I just didn't want to do a cruise. And then I, the fact that you with all these people, you got the buffets going on, because I'm not a big buffet person, I'm just not. I like just to sit at a table and somebody serve me. And so I just, you know, I was like, ah, oh, 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 I don't want to do it. So my best friend, son's birthday was coming up. He's turning 40, monumental. And she invited family and friends. Let's go and on a cruise and have a good time. So I said, oh, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe I can do it. For, I can do it for him. I can do it for him. And um, we all, you know, go ahead and do our little. And one thing that's beautiful about Carnival is that you can pay within six months. So you pay a down payment and you pay the rest later, which is great. Because then you got time to, to shop around for your, your flights if you have to fly to the port. Because we went to Orlando and we had to fly to Orlando. So if you want to fly from the port, you know, fly to the port, you know, it gives you time to do all that. And so I go on this trip. And I had a marvelous, absolutely grand time. I was so shocked that I enjoyed this cruise. Because in my mind, I was like, this is not going to work. I don't like crowds of people. I don't like the buffets. And it just seems boring. You're, fl you're riding on a freaking ship, you know, and all you see is ocean. What's so glamorous about that? Well, Carnival is a... And in my other videos, I tell you about my whole trip. So Carnival is a party ship. So if you want to do a cruise, I will advise you, if you've never done one, the first one should be a Carnival. Then you can do the Norwegian, Royal Caribbean. You can do all the other ones if you want to do the sophisticated ones. But Carnival, they're sophisticated, but they are party ships. 
And we party from sun up to sundown. I had a good time because I love music. You know, I have a music channel as well. And um, just to integrate um, eating and music all the time was wonderful. Wonderful. It was like being in heaven almost. I mean, I just had a real good time. And then they had, throughout the ship, they had, they had comedy. And they had a comedy club, which was real nice and posh. I was like, this is the best comedy club I've ever been in. And um, they had a nice comedian, and she was funny. We had a good time. And then when we got to the Bahamas, we went to some of the clubs because we liked to party. So we hopped all the different clubs. We were out to like 4 in the morning. Clubs were shutting down uh, on us, but we didn't care because, you know, we were there to have a good time. And I absolutely enjoyed it. And the buffets were the bad. Because there were like two big grand buffets and they were moving real fast and they had beautiful cakes. They had all kinds of stations. You can get the, the stir fry station. They even had a sushi bar, but you pay for that. They had the seafood bar, you pay for that. But my goodness, that seafood is worth it. So you have all these options. You have barbecue and most of all, you have Guy's Burger. Guy's Burger. <laughs> Is one of the best burgers and I believe he's on all the carnival sh cruise ships I'm sure he's on all of them but at least I know he's on Liberty but oh my god my friend she was saying you've got to try his burger and I'm like oh here we go another burger. <laughs> I, this burger I was like oh my god this burger is good so anyway I'm doing enough talking let me start eating before my food get ice cold so I'm saying all this because I like I do investments. I like to invest. I do trading. Um, that's part of my work from home. I do day trading. That's a whole new saga. And so I'm always interested in companies that I enjoy and if they're on the stock exchange. And so lo and behold, Carnival's on the stock exchange so you can buy stock from Carnival. And the beauty of Carnival, Carnival, Carnival stock is, it's trading right now at $48 or $49. And there's a dividend. The dividend is $2 per share per year. So if you buy 100 stock of Carnival, which is going to cost you about roughly $48,000, maybe more than that. Oh, it depends um, where the stock is at the time. You're going to get... $2 for every 100, for every stock you have. So that's going to be $200 extra you get a month. I mean, not a month, a year for having a stock. And the dividend is companies reward their shareholders parts of the profit. So they give you a part of the profit of what they're making. And so Carnival has been ecstatic since 1970. They're going to be around for a long, long time. And I'm sure they are the largest fleet of ships. And I'm sure they're just going to keep going forward and forward. And eventually the stock will probably reach to about $68. I'm going to predict it's going to be about $68 in probably another two years. So if you buy it now, you're going to gain an extra $20. Plus, you're going to have that dividend. And the beauty of having 100 stock with Carnival is that they give you credits. So every time you cruise, you get up to $250 in credits. So it's like free spending money because you buy your cruise and then you always got to have money because you know you want, may want to buy an alcohol package or if you don't buy the alcohol package, you may want to buy this or buy that, but you have credits on your card and you can utilize those credits. So you're getting credits plus you're getting dividends and you're getting money from the stock. Yay! A win-win situation. So if you want to get started, try Robin Hood because Robin Hood is a trading platform that's free and if you if you're on your um cell phone go all the way to about on my page and you'll see robin hood click on that and get started you get a free stock and i get a free stock and the stock could be anything i got a, i got a few nice stocks and you know why not it's free and you get a free stock really yes yes you do because all the other platforms charge you a fee for trading, which is like $4.95. Some of them have stopped. 
but a lot of them still do charge you a fee. This way, you don't have to pay any fees. You don't have to buy just Carnival. You can buy any kind of stock you want to buy if you're interested in doing that, investing in the future. And it's free. And so if you're on your computer, there's a Robin Hood to your right um, logo. Click on that and you can get started. So that you and I both can get free stock. And then you, once you become a member, you can send this link to your friends and family and get them to invest. And then you get the free stocks. How about that? So let me eat a little bit and then talk some more. Mm, mm, mm. It's a little cold, but I tell you what, it is flavorful. It is flavorful. I mean, I could eat cold chicken. It was real good chicken. Not the Popeye's chicken. Not the um, KFC chicken. But in Memphis, in Tennessee, mm. Give me a napkin, go. It fell on the floor. All right. I'm going to that. Tennessee, there's this place they call Gus's Fried Chicken. I believe it was originally owned by black folks. And they're not too far from the Martin Luther King um, Lorraine Hotel that's in Memphis, where he was assassinated. They're like right around the corner somewhere. And so, and that's the place you should go to as well. And when I, um, do another tour of that. I also videotape that as well. So you guys can see what it's all about. But they have the best fried chicken. I'm going to say in the country. This fried chicken is so delicious three days after. Now what fried chicken you know that you can eat three days later and it still tastes good. They soak their chicken in something. And the way they fry it is not, it's not like a, a batter. It's a real thin batter, but it's all over the chicken. So when you bite into the chicken, it's a nice crunch. But not a fluffy crunch like the uh, Popeyes and all that. Not that type of batter. Not the flakiness. I can't explain it, but you have to Google it. And anytime you're in Tennessee, you have to try it out. You really have to try it out. It is the best chicken. And it's not that expensive. It's very inexpensive. I mean, how much can you charge for chicken? Really? You got um, Church's Chicken charge like almost nothing for their chicken. I don't like Church's Chicken. Church's Chicken is just not seasoned enough for me. Um... I do like the jalapenos, I just don't, and I like the strawberry soda, but I just don't like the chicken. So. But, I got no mind. That's all I really had to talk about today. This wine is so good. Especially when you like semi-sweet. It's like, let me try to taste the flavors. I taste I taste a lot of fruit. I taste more fruit than anything. I really taste the, the grape. It's not really enhanced in flavor. It's just a good flavor of wine, but it's not one of your traditional wines that are. Because Zinfandel is like a mixture of um, grapes and um, 
I believe. Or is it Fidel's the Great? And um, there seems to be like a mixture of stuff in here. Um, almost, it tastes almost like a variety. You know, variety is a mixture of grapes. This tastes almost to me like a variety because I can't really have a distinctive flavor in it. <coughs> Other than a nice grape. That's my take on it. You try it out and then you tell me what you taste. I may be missing the boat. I don't know. But this is what I know. Is that I just taste the grape. All right. Let's do this one more time. So I hope you guys are enjoying your meal as I am. And if you like this channel, go ahead, subscribe, like, and please give me feedback. I love feedback. Give me a comment of what you think, um, how you like the show, what you want to see on the show. Um, I have no problems with feedback. Feedback makes you greater. Stay, keep you in tune to your audience. So give me the feedback. Until next time, deuces. Uh, yeah, my trigger fingers itching for your pension, so I'm on the mission.